So what's a diffraction grating? So we've dealt with this double slit experiment a little bit earlier. How is a diffraction grating similar but different to that? If we looked at a magnified view of a diffraction grating, it has many slits, many slits, not just two. So some number larger than two, typically much larger than two. So it's called a diffraction grating. And since light has many different places it could originate coming out of this, so passing through this surface, so when I shine it on a screen somewhere over here, I have many different sources of light that could be potentially interfering with each other. So and that's the nature here. So pretty much So your derivation is pretty much exactly the same way we derived it for a two slit. So now you just have many. So in this case, the distance of separation between each individual slit we call D. So for the most part, pretty much analogous to the two slit experiment, just with many slits. But again, D sine theta, the extra distance one ray would travel from it compared to another if it came out of a different slit, has to be some multiple of wavelengths if we're going to have constructive interference and get a bright fringe. But everything else, calculation-wise, exactly the same as the two slit model. Nothing different. So the other context you might see this is your single slit experiment. And this is a little bit funky. So in this case, if I have a single slit, How many different places can light pass through this surface? One. Unfortunately, we still see an interference pattern, even with only one slit. Why? Well, this, notice, if we look at like light, like 565 nanometers is the wavelength of, say, green light. How wide is that? Really small. And so in this case, you can probably fit multiple light rays even through a single slit. And these multiple light rays, they can originate from a lot of different places. And so when they scatter out here, some from the top of the slit might interfere with some from the middle of the slit, and so on and so forth. And that's why you're still going to see an interference pattern. So I'm not going to derive this one, but it would be derived in similar fashion. So but A sine theta is equal to m lambda. So we're again m is still some integer. But in this case, if you actually look at the derivation, this tells you not where the bright fringes come. This tells you where you get the dark fringes from. So and it seems a little bit, of fun little bit funky here. So, but it's based on the way it's defined. This a here, notice we don't have a d anymore. Why don't we have the letter d in this one? Yeah, there is no multiple slits, so I can't have a distance between them. And so what A ends up being is the width of the split, of the, the split, the slit itself. And so in this case, we typically look at, again, a ray that's at the extreme edge of the slit and one with the middle of the slit interfering. We look at the borders. So, and that would be how far apart would those be then? Half of A. And so that's why it looks like, oh, A, and it's just a multiple of, of wavelengths. That should work. But it's really half of A that we're really comparing a distance. And at the end of the day, though, it ends up looking like this instead. So, but you've got to know how to plug and chug it. So you've got to know that A stands for the width of the slit rather than the distance between slits or anything like that. But other than that, it looks very similar to the ones you've already seen. So what's the other big part you've got to remember on this is that when you solve for this, what are you actually getting? Yeah, the locations of the dark fringes, the angles at which the dark fringes are located, not the bright fringes.